Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where after yesterday's oh, magnum opus edition, one hour and 46 minutes of me doing battle with um, Celery's fantastic killer Sudoku um, seesaw, uh, today I'm assured this is slightly more approachable. It's called Doubling Loop and it's by the great It Trio. Uh, an incredibly consistent and brilliant constructor, uh, and this and this is sort of arrow Sudoku, but there's going to be a loop we have to draw in the grid, and where wherever the loop goes, um, so say this was on the loop, it would double the value of that cell. So it's a really cool idea. It's got three stars out of five on Logic Masters Germany. It's been recommended to us a whole truckload of times. Uh, and I'm looking forward to having a go at it in a moment or two. I'll read you the rules properly. What news do I have before that? I don't have much to tell you. There's um, there's a new uh, batch of solution videos for last month's monthly reward, uh, which was called Evening Attractions. Uh, some of you noticed that that was an anagram of negative constraint. Um, yeah, there's a whole batch of um, solution videos over on Patreon now, and the the second batch, the final batch, will go up tomorrow. Um, so if you were stuck on any of the puzzles from last month's competition, there there, there is now help at hand. Um, and there's a, there's a whole load of stuff over on Patreon at the moment. There's the James Bond Sudoku Hunt, which is this month's competition. Islands of Insight, um, my playthrough of that. Um, Mark's one-up video featuring the new puzzle by Rodolfo Kirchen. Um, probably other things as well. Can't remember what, but I have got some birthdays to tell you about as well. So let's do birthdays. I'll start off with Lewis. Lewis, you've turned 18 today. A very important birthday. And I know this because your friend Georgia wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. So Lewis, I hope your day is filled with an enormous amount of chocolate cake. Uh, at the age of 18, I figure you can eat quite a lot of cake with no worries about putting on weight. So yeah, do it. And, and indulge. Um, Connor, you've turned 20 today, and I know this because your girlfriend Simrin wrote to us uh, and said, oh, and Connor, I'm told you don't like cake, but you're having a stack of pancakes. Now, that is probably the only um, legitimate alternative to cake because pancakes are rather wonderful, providing, of course, they're thin crepe style pancakes, which I'm sure is what you're having. Um, so enjoy your pancakes, Connor. Many happy returns. And then finally, I might get the pronunciation wrong here, but I'll try. Over there in South Korea, Hyewon? I want to say Hyewon. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Hyewon has turned 21 today. Many happy returns. And apparently Hyewon started watching The Witness videos originally. What a game that was. Um, and apparently our videos have helped in the preparation for Hyewon's upcoming exchange student program um, with with learning English uh, and I'm told that oh, as Mavericks Mavericks about to fly over um, that rather than chocolate cake see <laughs> sorry the traditional the traditional food in South Korea is seaweed soup that's not the same thing at all um, but Hyoan might be having seaweed soup seaweed soup and cake I hope you are I really do. I, I actually, I quite like the sound of seaweed soup, but it doesn't seem to have quite the same uh, festive uh, <laughs> festive connotation as, as chocolate cake would. So seaweed soup and chocolate cake, I, went, I hope you managed to have that today uh, over there in South Korea, a place I've spoken of before that I would very much like to visit Um well, once Protoss has been deleted from StarCraft 2. Anyway, that's a different topic. Let's have a look at doubling loop and see what Itrio has in store. These are the rules of the puzzle. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Um, digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's bulb. So uh, I was about to look at this one, but this one's bonkers. So let's look at these squares. So let's say this was one, two, and three. One plus two plus three is six. Um, now, here is here is the part. Oh, hang on. Well, I'll restart. I want to just delete them. Couldn't see the delete button. Um, now we have to draw a one cell wide loop of orthogonally connected cells. The loop may not touch itself even diagonally. So let's have a go. Oh, let's have a go at drawing a loop. Um, 
we could draw a loop that did something like um, this. That is a legitimate loop. Um, and you can see that the, this is one cell wide. Uh, the loop doesn't touch itself even diagonally. So um, what, what didn't happen with this loop is it didn't do this. So although that looks like a loop, you can see that these two squares do actually just clip each other diagonally. That's not allowed in this loop. And what does orthogonal connection mean? Well, that means that each sort of subsequent cell on the loop shares an edge. So what the loop doesn't do is that. This would not be considered a loop because these two squares only share, touch each other at a point. They are not orthogonally connected. So we could complete the loop by adding a, adding a cell in. So we have to build a loop somewhere in the puzzle. And then digits on the loop count as double their value for the purposes of arrows. So let's go back to this one. Let's say that the loop did, let's say this was the loop. I very much doubt that. If that happens to be the loop, that is, that's just serendipitous. That is, not, uh, that is not deliberate. But if this was the loop, and let's say we, we put one, two, and three in again, then this digit would be, this would count double. So, so it would, that would be an eight, um, double two, plus one plus three is eight. So that's how that would work. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I think, I think I'm going to start with this ludicrous arrow at the top. Um, although that is also ludicrous, isn't it? Uh, and why do I want to start here? Well, it's because I know the triangular number for five. So look at these squares. What's the absolute minimum we could put into these squares? Well, it would be a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 sum to 15. And I can't write 15 into this, this cell. So this cell here must be doubled. And if it's doubled, that means it's on the loop. And if it's on the loop and in the corner, then we can start to build a loop immediately. Now, I was going to, I was going to use the pen tool to draw my loop. So something like something like this but what i might that's i don't actually think that's going to be sensible because it's going to overlay the arrow so i might just use colors so we have to decide what color we're going to draw our loop in um these <laughs> these are the questions i debate i might start with red um so i think we can say that this is forced because this is on the loop and the loop therefore must come in and out of row one, column one. We can do that. And then this square, which I'll make green, cannot be on the loop because then the, otherwise the loop would touch itself and it's not allowed to do that. So actually we're going to get quite a few loop cells immediately, although that's quite surprising because now two cells uh, on this arrow are being doubled at least uh, which is right. It's that's useful. Actually, we can, in fact, that's going to force this to be red. Let, let me show you. So we can, we can, let's think about how this, this arrow could possibly work now, given that these two squares are going to be doubled on it. What's the minimum these could be? Well, they could be a one, two pair. And then these could be a minimum of three, four, five. Now, if these are doubled, that their, their value is six because it's one plus two is three doubled so that's six plus three four five is 18. well that's that if that's the minimum we can make the the arrow add up to that's what it must be because we can't have this cell valued at more than 18 and the only way we can get it valued at 18 is if we double nine it so this must be double nine these squares are green because they can't be doubled as well so the loop must turn this square now can't well no this square can't be um uh, red because if it was the loop would have to close <laughs> that would be quite a funny loop but i can tell you that that square must be uh, on the loop because it's got the same property look as this one in the sense that those digits will add up to at least 15 whether or not any of them are doubled so that must be a double digit. So we can immediately, I think, therefore, make this square green and this square red. Um, these squares are 
six, seven, and eight by Sudoku, and that that one's got some. This one's got something wrong with it, um, because those. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's look at this short stubby arrow. Now, if there was no loop interference with this short stubby arrow, and let's say this square was a six, what would this square be? Well, the answer is a six, and that won't work from a Sudoku perspective. So we have to we have to change one of the digits only in this congregation, and we can't only change this one. If this was red, those would be red, and these would both be doubled and both have the same value. So that doesn't work. So, so we have to double that one and not this one, which means this is a corner of the loop. And here we go, lovely. So that's green. Now, yeah, so now this is a standard trick that comes up in these loop puzzles where there's the requirement that the loop can't touch itself. We can't now go here because such a loop as this one needs needs at least a U pentomino in order to turn. It's sort of a very wide, it's a vehicle that has a wide turning circle. So if we pop it in here and then send it there, you can see that it would, in order to get out of this little, this little cul-de-sac it's in, it would have to turn here and thereby touch the loop that's there, which is not allowed. So those squares have to be uh, green. This is loop. Actually, I've just thought red green. I, I think our red green doesn't actually trigger people's red red green color blind issues. But maybe I should maybe I should go away from this. I'm not sure because I, mm, I could go blue orange. I think blue orange are our best colors. So maybe I should do that. Let's go blue orange just to be. Hopefully that's clearer. I'm I'm sorry if I've upset anybody by going red green. Um, so this is now <laughs> now I can't view this. This is a doubled cell. Okay, so so this must be. Yeah. Okay. So this is a plain cell. So it can't be a seven. Because that would require this to be doubled three and a half. Sorry, that's totally obvious. So this is three or four. And this square is doubled on a three cell arrow adding to... Oh, this can't be a six. Um, because if this was a six, this would be a one, two, three triple. And none of those squares could be doubled. So this is not six. If it's seven, it has to be one, two, three, with the one being doubled. And if it's eight, the two could be doubled. But you right. But what you can't ah okay. But what you can't do here is double two of the numbers on this arrow, because if you did, the minimum those two did doubled numbers could be would be a one and a two. Double those, that's six, and the other digit could be a minimum of three if you've used, used one and two on the on the on the on the arrow already. So the minimum you could create was a nine arrow and we're not allowed a nine arrow. So that square and that square have to both be not on a loop, which means that's on a loop. Um, that's a double three at least. Oh, well, that's a, that is a double three, actually. That just has to be a double three because if it's not double three, it's double four. And if this was doubled four, it would be worth eight. And by the time we added that digit to it, that would be nine at least. And that cannot be a nine because of this corner square. So that must be double three, which means this is one or two, I think. And that is seven or eight. That seems to be what how that has to work. If that's three, that's four. So that's eight in the corner, that's seven, that's six. Here we go. That's now, how do we make this arrow work? The only way, given that these, these have to add up without any doubling to one, two, and three, this must be a doubled one. That must be a two, three pair. That means this is a two, which means this is an, oh. Well, no, that, that okay, that is an eight then because we can't double this digit. Otherwise, we're gonna to have to write 10 into that square. So that's not loop. So this is loop. 
Now this can't be loop or the loop will have to close because the loop can't touch itself diagonally. So we're going to continue down column one. Um, we can eight must be in one of those three squares by Sudoku. That's got to be loop because the loop has to get out of box three. That square may, may or may not be loop. I don't know. These squares are four, five, six, and seven, which is a slightly overzealous pencil mark. And there must be a one up there. And now I'm stuck. Uh, what could we do here? Five, six, seven, nine. That square is five or nine by Sudoku. It can't be six or seven. This arrow, ah, that's doubled. This arrow must be at least four, five, and six now, mustn't it? That's the minimum we could put onto the arrow because we can't put one, two, and three on it. Four, five, and six add up to 15. Um, so this square here must be doubled. And well, okay, also that has to be an eight or a nine. Because 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 we know these squares, even if there's no doubler in them, maybe there can't be a doubler in them now. Let me just think about that. If this was four, five, six, and we doubled the four, yeah, that's too many. That's too many. That's 19. Um, and we can't make this add up to more than 18 if it's double nine. So not only is this doubled, but none of those are doubled. Oh, hang on. So now, now I've got my, my highlighting the wrong way. So that's blue, isn't it? Blue is my loop. These are orange. I haven't done that anywhere else, have I? Oh, goodness, I hope not. Th this is not four, five, six. Um, well, it, yeah. OK, this has to add up. This has to add up to an even number, which is 16 or 18. So how do you make that add up to? Yeah, you can't. OK, that's very cool. Uh, I don't think this can be eight because these would have to add up to 16. They would have to be four, five and seven. That's the only way that the remaining digits. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't work. So we've got a seven at the top here. There's, there's, there's no other digits available. So that has to be nine. And now, well, how do we could do global maths on this now, but maybe we don't need to. So these three squares have to add up to, to, to and they're plain vanilla. They have to add up to 18. And the digits available, oh, we can't use an odd number because we've only got one We've only got one odd number left. That's that's the way to do that. We can do it by parity. Um, we've only got we've only got one odd number left in the column. We've used up one, three, seven, and nine. So there's only five left. So if we put five on the arrow, it would add this this sh because we can't put a second odd number on the arrow. This arrow must add up to an odd number, which it doesn't. So we can put the five here. These squares are therefore all even numbers. Uh, they are four, six, and eight. Now, what does that mean? I hear you ask. I don't know yet. Uh, no, I don't know yet. Let's think. <laughs> what do we what are we meant to do with that deduction? I have no idea. There, okay, this digit is 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 also on the loop. And it's on the loop because again, the triangular number for four this time is, is ten. One plus two plus three plus four. In fact, we can't make we can't put a one two pair on this arrow. So the minimum this arrow adds up to is one three four five, which is thirteen. And we can't write thirteen here, so that's got to be a loop cell, which means this square is not a loop cell. Now this can't be on the loop, otherwise again the loop will have to close. So that square is therefore 
orange, which turns the loop there. Okay, so now we have to be very careful. Look what's happened in box two. We've got two loop cells coming in, but this naughty one has clipped row four, column five. It's touching it diagonally. So the next step for this one is either here or here. Well, if it's here, this can never move because the loop's going this way. So it doesn't go there, it must go there. And now how does this get out? Well, it can't go into these squares, so it closes like that. And we've actually, and now all, now, now, now look what happens along, along uh, row five. This section of loop cannot be touched even diagonally. So we can zoom orange straight across there. This has become a, an alleyway, so the loop goes through there. This is loop coming down here. That's slightly surprising because that's taken, that's putting a doubler on the arrow. I suppose this could po probably be nine though. Maybe that well, maybe, maybe we can force this to be nine. We'll think about that in a moment. Um, right. Let's think. Now we have to think again, don't we? Oh, here's a beautiful, here, oh, ho, ho, ho. right. What I've just thought of there is my favorite bit of the puzzle so far. Here, here you go. That's not a loop square. If you, if you can't see why that is, do pause the video because you'll enjoy this. Why is that not a loop square? And the answer is if both of these are loop, then both of them are doubled which means this is an even number. And it can't be an even number because all the even numbers have gone apart from two. And there's no way that this can add up to two because that's doubled. So that means this is odd, not, well, it doesn't mean it's odd. What it means is it's not doubled. So it's that one, which means that the loop must do that, which means this square is now orange. I mean, actually, it probably does. It does mean that this is actually odd, doesn't it? Because because we can't have this adding to an even number. So we have to change the parity. So this digit is one, three or seven because it can't be five or nine. That's doubled. So well, and this digit can't be that big. Ah. Yeah, I mean, that's right. I mean, I was I was just, just in, I was playing with an idea in my mind, which was totally bonkers, um, which was, how, was I right to close the loop here or could the loop go down here? And because if the loop could have gone down here, that would have changed some of these conclusions because this would have potentially been a doubled enormous number. But that, yeah, the, the loop can't come down here. So let's just take a step back. Let me show you. So we worked out that this couldn't be loop and that's totally reasonable. This has to come down and close. Now, none of this, we can, we can orangeify the whole of box nine as well, which, 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 which is more, even more useful. Now this has to be small. This has to be odd. This digit. So we're doubling this. And this is a normal number and is odd. But it can't be. No, it can't be three, can it? Because for it to be three, given this is doubled, we'd need we'd need this to be doubled one and add that to one. So this square here is five, seven or nine. Now. Well, now what's going on here? This is doubled. So again, does this have to be odd, I think? Yeah, because because we need to change the parity along this arrow because this can't be even, but this cell itself is giving an, is, 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 is an even value in the sum of this arrow because it is doubled. So this is odd, but this could be low. This could be one, three, five or seven. And this square, which is natural, is therefore 
well I think it's five seven or nine because we worked out that this couldn't be three because once that's doubled it's at least doubled one would give us two and we can't put one beneath the one in the column so that's f so so that's nearly interesting and that digit which is doubled is now one two or a three it can't be a four Oh, it's so close to doing something in this um, in this box. Where? Okay, here's a question. Oh no, this is a better question. Where's eight in this box? There. Where's four in this box? I mean, Itrio, it's outrageous. You're doing Sudoku. You're making me do Sudoku in your Sudoku puzzle. This, so this is now valued at eight, and that's a natural digit. So that must be nine. That must be one. We've now got a two, three pair here. So this is a six, seven pair. That's knocking seven out of these squares. Um, oh, hang on. And this is nine. So that's five, which I'm now not even sure. Oh, I can get to it. I was suddenly worried that that was impossible, but it's not. If we double two and add it to one, then we, we can get to five here. So that's now a three. That's a two. Good grief. This is beautiful puzzle. What a beautiful puzzle. Now, uh, nine and three. Where? Oh, <laughs> OK. Where's nine in column nine? The answer is there. Where's three in column nine? The answer is that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight losing its religion. Uh, so that's a two seven pair. Uh, that's a five. That's a three. Now that five is knocking itself out of that square. So in row oh, six, seven and nine is what we've got to place in row two of the grid. I'm going to change the pencil. Or am I? Mm. No, I'm not. Actually, I'm going to restore that pencil mark because I really don't know. I'm going to have a lot of digits pencil marked here if I pencil mark it fully, which I'm, I'm not a big fan of. OK, so how are we going to extend the loop now? And the answer is I don't know yet. Oh, one question I was going to think about was, does this have to be a nine? The answer is I don't know. Um, this is doubled. So what's the minimum we could put on this arrow? Let's say none of these were doubled. So that's the only double digit. That could be a doubled one. So it's worth two. But if that is a doubled one, that's going to be a two in the column. So one, three, four, five, I'm going to claim is the minimum with the one doubled, which is 14 bother <laughs> because that means that could be a seven uh i bet it isn't a seven well maybe i don't maybe i bet it no um hmm no i don't know i'm not sure about that sorry OK, maybe it's this one then, um, where, well, this, well, that's interesting. Right. So here is, I'm going to, I'm going to claim something now, which might be wrong. But we, we saw in row one that if you double two digits along a five cell arrow, you have to write nine in here. And these squares have to be one, two, three, four and five with the one and two being doubled. Now, that cannot be what this arrow is. Because that would mean this square was unfillable because these would be a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. So that means that exactly one of these squares is doubled. And we know that one of these squares is doubled because the loop has to close. We've got this cell on the right hand side and this cell on the left hand side. So exactly one of these cells is, is on the loop, not two. 
Now, this is probably under some pressure anyway, though, because, it, okay, let's say we, we double a one on this on this loop and then the other digits couldn't be two three four and five but they could be two three four and six and then this would be able to be five so the absolute minimum of this is one three no one two three four six with a one doubled which is worth 17 i'm going to claim which is not a possible total for a doubled number Well, okay. Uh, yeah, but maybe we could. Yeah, it's just, oh, hang on. Yeah, so 16 is the absolute minimum I can put on this arrow. One of the digits is doubled, which is taking the minimum value of this to 17. The only way that this can get up as high as 17 is if it's double nine. So actually we are looking at doubled. Um, I can do a bit of Sudoku, I'm suddenly seeing. Um, I can do a bit of Sudoku, but so this has to actually have a value of 18 now. Which could be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 with the 2 doubled. Or I suppose it could be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 7 with the 1 doubled. So I don't actually know what's on this arrow now, I don't think. I don't even know what the double digit is on this arrow. I know it's a one or a two, I think. Maybe it can be three. Let me just think about that. If three was doubled down here, that would be worth six. And then the other digits would have to be worth 12. They'd have to be one, two, four, five. That, that breaks that square, so that doesn't work. Yeah, so, that, so the double digit on this arrow is one or two, but I don't know which. And, oh, nearly. Oh, can we put nine there? Let's think about that. Um, if that's enough, oh. No, we can, because that can be blue, and that will, that will, that will allow that. Yeah, okay, let's come back. This can't be seven anymore. Because because if this is seven, the way the way that we got to fourteen was by packing this with low digits. Um this this arrow at the bottom of column two. So if that's seven, where do you put nine in this column? There's nowhere for it to go. You can't put nine on on an arrow. Um and then add three more digits to that, one of which could has to be doubled and only get to 14. So that is nine. Aha, that's nine. That's a very peculiar arrangement of nines down here, which is, in, well, that's lovely. <laughs> that's actually lovely. I'm going to come down here. There might be more stuff we can do up here, but I've spotted something here. Look. When you get this like two by two arrangement of nines, the finished grid is either going to have nines in these two squares, and that is what's going to happen, or it's going to have nines in these two squares. Well, this this is impossible because these two squares add up to 18, even if both are undoubled. And once we add at least one to that, we've got 19 and we can't make this add up to 19, even if we doubled a nine in it, which we most certainly couldn't do. That's beautiful. So that's got to be double nine. I really like this puzzle so far. It's not monstrously hard yet, but it's some of the logic is gorgeous. Well, now, how could that not be doubled? It must be doubled because there's nine on its arrow. So that's got to be doubled, which is, oh, hang on, I've got the wrong color. And I've been totally discombobulated by changing the color scheme halfway through. Um, so now that can't be doubled. Otherwise, we've got equality between these two, and yet these two have to add, appear on the on the arrow. Right. 
this is beautiful this puzzle is beautiful so so it's, it's quite a lot of it's about parity i think because now we know that the loop visits this square definitely but we know that it's a loop and therefore there must be an entrance and an exit for the loop from this square well how could they be there if the loop continues in that way these two digits will add up to an even number because they're both doubled. And that's impossible because these two digits are need to add up to nine in order to close the gap between the nine here and the 18 that this has the value of. And that means that the loop doesn't do that. It doesn't take these two squares. So it must take its only other entrance or exit square. There are three choices. Two of these three squares are loop. That one is loop and now this arrow can't have any more doublers on it because we worked out that the only way you can make a five cell arrow work is if if it had if it has more than one doubler on it is for it to have two doublers on it and for it to be one two doubled with a three four five triple which will break that square so this square is orange this square is blue the blue thing has to close the loop one of these two squares only is now blue Um, and if we took that one, then we're going to be doubling more on this one. In fact, that's interesting. If the loop swings down, down here, how do we close the loop without doubling yet another square on this arrow? And the answer is, there is no way, is there? In fact, that you can see at least that, that the only way that these you could close this at all is by this also being blue so you're going to have at least three doublers on this arrow now that might be possible but i bet it isn't um now so because the minimum we could double would be a one three and a four which is yeah what is 16 that's going to be a two and the other digit will be a five and that's way too much it's way it's not even close it's not even close so what i'm saying seeing there is because this we can't use a one two pair in these three squares because that's going to break this square the minimum i could put here would be a one a three a four this is to two so we could do something like that with the one three and the four doubled so we're already at 16 once we double these squares once we add the five we're at 21 and we need to get to 18 so this doesn't work so this has to not be on the loop the loop must go up here and the loop mustn't touch anything that it's already so this is now definitely not on the loop the loop remember what we said about how the loop has to turn it needs a very wide turning circle so none of this none of this is on the loop that's not on the loop um right now now let's think about these two squares because these two squares well this is doubled we, we know these two have to have a value of nine with this being doubled so this is one three or four it can't be two uh, and if this is four its value is eight so that's a one if this is three its value is six so that's a three that doesn't work because of the three in the corner and if this is one its value is two and this is a seven and that might work so that that's probably okay um and this so we know this is the doubler now don't we which we said was a one or a two on this arrow because we decided or i think i decided well you definitely can't have a three here anyway now so this this can't possibly be double four eight double four here would be worth eight one two three six would be the minimum for the others which is getting to 20 isn't it which is far too much so 
So this is one or two. Oh. <laughs> right, it's not one. <laughs> That's this is this is beautiful as well. This is beautiful. Right, what we just did is we worked out some options for these two squares. And we worked out we either have one here and seven here, or we have one here and four here. So one of these two squares is a one. Don't know which one, but one of them is a one. They both see that square. So that doesn't work. If this was one, this would be a four counting as eight, and that would be a seven counting as seven, and that would be 15, which is far too many. So this, this is a two, uh, which means that's a two, that's a seven, which means that's a one, and now that's a four to make the mathematics of this arrow. This arrow is so splendid, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. We probably have to think about those digits now. Um, I'll do that in a second. Let me just, ah, I can do more Sudoku up there. So now, okay, so now we might have to think harder about this arrow. Can we really have two doublers on this arrow? If, if, they, if, if, if this is blue, this is a minimum of two and three doubled, isn't it? That would be worth 10. And then these would be a minimum of four and five plain. So we're at 19, so no, that can't be doubled which means the loop goes here. We've just got a little ambiguity in terms of how to close the loop. That square's not a four. Um, this is doubled. Oh, I was wondering if we could do something parity. Oh, well, hang on. Now, I was going to say it's something to do with parity, but it might not be actually, because these two squares are both enormous. Especially this one. This square cannot be one, two, three, or four, so it's at least a five, and it's doubled. So this must be doubled, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise what, the world doesn't work. <laughs> so we've got. So that's how. That's our loop. Our sort of. Um, it's a sort of blue heart shape. <laughs> Uh, of loopiness. Now, what is going on here then? This is at least a 5 doubled, which is 10. And this is at least a 4. So that's 14. So this has got to be a 7 or an 8, I think. And we might be able to do better than that. But I'm not sure how. There's a one in one of those squares. Do we know what this digit is? Does that have to be three? I, th I bet you it does. I mean, yeah, the minimum value of these squares, given they can't include a one, is two, three, and four, which add up to nine, which means this has a maximum value of nine, given that this is worth double nine. But this is at least... Uh, yeah, so so if this was if this was five doubled, it would have a value of ten, and that's too many. So that's got to be a three. So we get a three down in one of those squares. So this is worth six, which means these squares have to be, and they're plain, have to be worth twelve. And they don't use one and they don't use three. So they have to be two, four, six. There we go. That's that's actually fairly clear, isn't it? So that square is not four or six. This square is five or seven by Sudoku. And if this is two, four, six, that's a six. <laughs> that seems to be true. Um, that's a two. So that's a two. That's a four. That's a four, that's a six, that's an eight. What about the bottom row then? Five and eight to place. Uh, the, the expression we're looking for there is bobbins. That seems to be ambiguous. What about row eight then? One, three, seven. So that's three or seven. Um... Hmm. I don't know. We we might be able to do some more 
thinking about this, I suspect. But let me just let me just mull things over again for a moment. Um, I'm sorry, there might be some children noise in the background. It's school holidays at the moment, so um, if you hear shrieking, it's it's just hijinks. <laughs> um, what about what about that digit then? I've already looked. At, I've already looked at this digit. That's either five. That's the, well. It's a minimum of five. But this is a minimum of four. I want to say. So if that was higher, if that was six, then this would be worth twelve plus four is 16 that's right isn't it so okay so we still don't know so i think that's five or six and this is four and if it's not four it's six five doubled yeah look that i don't think this can be seven because this would this would be impossible So it's not quite it's not quite resolved, is it? There's still a little bit more thinking to do. We could Is it this arrow? Is this somehow resolved? We've got two. Which is worth four. So these these are four natural cells that have to be worth 14, not including a two, and not including three, four, and five. So they could be one, three, four, which is eight. One, three, four, six, isn't it? How could they not be one, three, four, six? They must be one, three, four, six. There's no, there's no, there's no way of closing the gap because if, if, we, if we change one of those digits to a five, we, we, we lose too many degrees of freedom if you see what I mean yeah so so let's think about how we're going to let's, let's just, just de delete this and think about how we're going to make this total work these squares because this is worth four and we're going to 18 these have to be worth exactly 14 so we're going to have to have a one and we're going to have to have a three and now we need two more digits that add up to 10 well we can't use two eight we can't we can't repeat one by using one nine as well as the one we can't repeat three by using three seven so we're going to have to use one three four six that's become a seven that is now a five that's a three that's a four there's no four where's the four in this string it's got to be there that's got to be eight uh, in this column these squares have got to be a one six pair to complete this box. That's not three, look. So there's a three here, so that's not three. Bobby, uh, is this done? That's not six. That's not one. Uh, we might <laughs> we might be chocolate teapotted there. I'm not sure. Sorry. Uh, ah, that four's useful. That's become a six, so that's got to be a five. So we've got double five, ten plus six is uh, sixteen. So that's worth double eight. That well, puts five there, eight here. So that's no longer five. Look. Oh, and this is just a three seven pair. Oh, well, that's useful actually. Because if that's a three seven pair, which it seems to be, that's going to correct this digit. So that becomes a six. That becomes a four. We get a five seven pair here. Oh, we could have got that six from this being a one six pair if I'd done the Sudoku in a different order. Bobbins. <laughs> okay, these squares here are one two and eight. And look, we're chocolate teapotted there as well. We get rid of the two from that one, the one from that one, and the eight from this one. That five, though, is useful. So seven here, five here, seven here. We've got to put a four in this box. We'll probably have to think about this in a moment, won't we? Um, 
but and we will do that in just a second or two's time once I have deduced um, whoa whoa that's an enormous digit so by Sudoku that is not one two three four five six it's got to be a seven or an eight only can we do the same here? No, this could be a one, look. Um, but if it isn't a one, it's one, six, seven, or eight. Yeah, what we really want to do, if we want to do some sort of parity thing, we know that's going to be even, and I like all of Itrio's parity tricks. I'm going to do a parrot. I'm going to do exactly that. Because watch, if that's a 7, which it is by Sudoku, now this square is an 8, which is even. This square is doubled, so it is even. So the value of this must be even. And it's not 8 anymore, so it's 6. <laughs> that is absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness me. That's now 1. Okay, what do we need? 1, 2, 5 and 7. Oh, well, well, okay, but but we know they add up to 14, don't we? So that's got to be 7. So the 7 and the 5 get disambiguated that way. That becomes 1 and 6. We should be able to do this digit with a modicum of thought. That's become 8, 2, 1. And we need 2, 3 and 7. So we can write 2, 3 and 7. That is so brilliant. That is so brilliant. How long does that take me? 51 minutes. Um, is it right? Yes, 164 people have solved it in seven in a week. Wow, that there are sub, some absolutely sublime moments in this. Um, where was my first sublime? Oh, yeah, over here, spotting that the loop couldn't take those two squares because this would be forced to be even was gorgeous. Spotting this double nine thing was gorgeous. Um, there was, and then the parity here was gorgeous. This this is a brilliant puzzle. This is a brilliant puzzle. That that the loop um, sort of geometry was forced in so many places by parity was just. I find that delightful. I can't even articulate why quite. It's it just it it feels like the sort of universe is locking into place. Um, I love that. Let me know in the comments whether you had a go and how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.